Um, so, up. Um, so he's, he's, he's so what he bit did. of the skin there, was it? Yeah, so his skin was, um, hanging way down here. Yep. It's inside the skin, but my son got up on a ladder. I think it was, was either one or there. Yeah. There or there. Actually, no, it would have been in here if it didn't get the ladder in the chipper. Yep. So it's gone up in, it was, the rest of it's up inside. No worries. But. They can either be really, they're either sweethearts or they're real vicious and cranky and snappy. So hopefully it's a real gentle one and it's just cruisy as. But I mean, they all tend to calm down pretty quickly, but because they're not, because they're not pet snakes, they're just, you know, a bit rightfully. These are solid. So it's like a white solid. Sort of like birds. So. Um, I have found some some definite uric up here, and I've found the rest of the the snake skin. Uh, um, I can't see the end of it actually. Oh, here we are. Yeah, I've got it out. Only another foot or so. Yeah. So, but yeah, that skin is a. Does belong to a coastal carpet python, so we can at least identify the species. Um. All right, so I'm trying to move this as quickly as I can. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, mate. Right in front of me, are you? Yeah. Hello, Snakey. Awesome. Hello. Can't see you real well. Hello, darling. Scaring the peoples. Hey? Scaring them. You're going to have to come out, sweetheart. We're just going to move you out of there. It's actually a pretty small one. Oh, really? Yeah. So maybe it's out there. No, no. Oh, it's well and truly an adult, but okay. you'll see the size difference from the skin compared to the snake in a sec. I even I did think it was going to be bigger from that skin. Um, it's unlikely to have more than one, but if you happen to see another one, just let me know, obviously. But. Um, Ah, just bit me on the knee. Oh, there you go. I wasn't <laughs> That's only because, you know, it's just been woken up and it's freaking out and it doesn't know what's going on. So, come here, mate. Hey, settle him down now. Hey, settle him down. Just don't bite me on the face. The knee's all right. Go into the bag. Go into the bag. Nope. There we are. You generally see the... Bag is somewhere safe to retreat to. Nice and warm and cozy. Oh, far out. It's, it actually, oh, you gotta actually get him out of yeah. yeah, I'll give you a good look. It's not too bitey of, a, of one, really. It's just that, obviously, you know, being woken up by some weirdo and and told to get out of his home. Yeah, coastal carpet python. So if you do see one again, you know what? This isn't that snake. This is not that snake. This one's partially shedding. See this? It's got bits of shed. And that one's a full grown shed. And that this did look smaller. So, I've got one snake. And then you must have another. It's um, breeding season. So, the other one may have passed through. Um, but yeah, see how that's got the, the skin still on it? And yep. it's in the process of shedding. So that's not also it. probably why it's a bit nippy because when shakes, snakes are on a shed cycle they're a bit agitated. Oh, look at him go. Um, um. No, nah, he's mm -hmm. fine. So, this is a very dull and about to shed snake. That's a very freshly shed. You have another one somewhere. So, we've got one. 
Well, have a look, another look for the other one. Oh. May have just moved on though. If, if it is breeding season, this is a bit smaller than that one. Females generally get bigger. Yes. So here's the python from last night. Uh, we waited till the morning to let it go because we had that sea snake that needed a bit more care and attention uh, than this guy. But yeah, absolutely stunningly beautiful snakes. I love carpet pythons. Gorgeous thing. They don't want to come out of the bag. It's funny how they don't want to go in the bag and then they don't want to come out. Hey buddy. Look at it just trying to hide its head because it's somewhere that it feels is safe and cozy. Absolutely gorgeous snake. Nice, nice pattern. Nice colours. These guys are a bit lighter than the ones back in Stanthorpe. Um, and I would assume the reason for that is because it's hotter here. So the ones in Stanthorpe need to be a bit darker to be able to retain more heat. So it makes total sense that these guys will be lighter. But it is just a variation of the exact same snake. This is one of the most highly variable snakes you will ever see. Um, apparently not as variable as they used to be. And what I mean by that is there are there was six subspecies of carpet pythons. So things like the diamond python uh, and your jungle pythons, your Darwin carpets, they're all the same species, even though they look completely different and share different habitats. They're the same species. Uh, but recently, I believe it's the, I think it's the Western carpet python, uh, or Murray Darling, I think it's the Western carpet python has very, very recently been declassified and is now its own separate species. So, so there's now only five carpet pythons in Australia. Oh, look at that. There it goes, his shed. Oh, that's why it looks so good. I bet I got a shed in there. Because remember when we caught it, it was um, partially shedding. So, checking the bag. I think it's had a shed in the bag. Here we go. It's just finding a spot under here to curl up, is it? Oh no, there's its little head poking out over there. Can you see that? You will when it moves, there's its little nose. So, it's just there. So yeah, incredibly uh, variable species. The coastal carpet python, which is this subspecies, has the biggest range out of all of the subspecies. Some of them have quite limited distributions, like the jungle python, which you'll only find in the wet tropics of North Queensland. Coastal carpet python, as the name suggests, is primarily found along coastal regions. Um, but because we got them out in Stanthorpe, they can obviously survive quite well in drier habitats as well. Um, which makes them not only highly variable in appearance, but also highly adaptable in habitat. And that's why this subspecies has such a wide distribution. They're, I believe, the biggest of the subspecies as well. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right there. That's how easy it is to not see a snake when you're walking through the bush. Hello, mate. I'm sorry. I know you had a nice cozy spot in the roof, but the people are a bit scared. Yeah, it's just trying to find a spot now to, to hide, really. It's been relocated, so it doesn't know where it is. It will, um, hide for a while and assess its surroundings and then when it feels comfortable it'll make a move and find a spot that'll be more of a permanent home but we're in some uh, small patch of rainforest here so no doubt there'll be a high species composition and plenty of prey items for this guy to eat that's why it's important that you can't just dump snakes into any sort of ha any bush not, not every snake lives in every bush 
That's why we have so many snakes. They're specialists for certain types of habitats and they must be put into the correct habitat. All right, he doesn't like me. All right, I'll leave you alone, mate. All right, have a good one. Let's just check if the bag's got a, got a shed in it. Yep, it does, look at that, there we are. There's the skin. She just goes to prove that that other snake skin that was at the house was not this snake because it's not gonna shed twice in a couple of days. Must be the week for it because I have at least five or six of my pet snakes shed this week too. Maybe something to do with the temperature, the air, the air and humidity. Oh, I can leave that here. It's part of the bush. Alright, that's cool.